All right. Welcome back to America's Voice Live on a Monday. Now, everyone is baffled about the near assassination of former President Donald Trump July 13th. Everyone turning their eyes to look at the director of the Secret Service, Kimberly Cheadle, to question how it possibly could have happened. Today, she was on the stand to testify in front of Congress, and nobody's letting her off the hook, nor should they. In fact, both political parties, in a bipartisan attack, stunned and upset, and even many Democrats calling Cheadle out for the terrible job she's done. Here's one example. Listen. To state anything that I think is profoundly important is that we need to have answers to the public. Ideally, I would encourage uh, you and the agency to be more forthright with the members that still have yet uh, to have their questioning because the public deserves to have full confidence and the stakes are too high. The violence that could break out in this political moment, regardless of party, in the event of someone getting hurt, constitutes a national security threat to the entire country. You know, do you know what Stuart Knight did when he was in charge at the time of the Secret Service? Do you know what he did afterwards? He remained on duty. He resigned. He resigned. And Stuart Knight was not a Democratic appointee or Republican appointee. Look, I'm not questioning your judgment. I, I just don't think this is partisan. If you have an assassination attempt on a president, a former president, or uh, a candidate, you need to resign. All right, joining me now to discuss this is Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Colonel, good to see you as always. It's a pleasure to be with you, Steve. And, and I want to talk about all that because a whole uh, contingent of members of Congress went to the scene of the crime, if you will, in Butler today. I'm going to get to that, but I, I have some breaking news because I want you to weigh in on this. Uh, it's being reported that Benjamin Netanyahu uh, is en route to the United States right now to meet with Joe Biden tomorrow. The meeting has been canceled, not by Netanyahu, I would suggest. So the question is, where is Joe Biden? Uh, what is his condition, honestly? And, and I think it's important for him to make an appearance. I mean, this is something that the Chinese do, the Russians do. Americans don't hide their leaders and say, oh, you know, we'll get back to you. It doesn't work that way, Colonel. What's going on? Well, it's very disconcerting because when you think about the most powerful man in the world, he's basically just disappeared. He sends us a note that says that he is not going to be running for president, but yet not making any type of personal appearance. It doesn't take that much to do something from a room in your Rehoboth uh, beach house. But when you think about all of these things coming together, remember, Steve, that here's an administration that has not had a cabinet meeting since October of last year. This is very worrisome because you have to ask yourself, who is in charge? Who is running this country? Who is in charge of this administration? Because I would uh, beg to differ that it is not Joe Biden. So these calls for him to step down and resign, they are, are very valid because obviously he does not have the capacity to continue on for the next five months as the president right. of the United States. And, and if you haven't held a cabinet meeting, when you say that to me, the first thing that I think of is, well, you wouldn't hold a cabinet meeting because if you get more than half the cabinet saying, this guy's not up to the job, it triggers the 25th Amendment, potentially, right? And so you just, you don't let him meet with the whole cabinet so they can put eyes on him and go, whoa, something is way wrong here. On June the 27th, that couldn't be avoided. And ever since then, the bottom has been falling out, right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you think about Alejandro Mayorkas and all these other members, members of the cabinet talking about how great he is, how sharp he is, how he's on top of all the issues. Well, how would you know if you have not had a cabinet meeting since October of last year? And then, of course, he cannot remember his own secretary of defense. He just refers to him as the black man. So this is very troubling what we see happening in the United States of America right now. And look, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris has been complicit in all of this. So I don't think that the Democrats should be slapping high fives and cheering, thinking that they have some great savior coming to their rescue. Yeah, I don't think so either. If a Republican referred to somebody as the black man, that would be the end of their career, by the way. Done. That, that would be, the, Done. it would be all over. Done. I mean, yeah. before the sun set that day, end of business, you're out. Uh, simple as that. All right, speaking of end of business, time to go. Uh, Kimberly Cheadle, chewed mm -hmm. up and spit out by AOC, Nancy Mace, Ro Khanna, People from all sides look, saying, you don't belong here anymore. Um, worst failure. Uh, admitted she doesn't oversee the, the plans to keep people safe. 
she admitted that somehow that that roof that was 150 yards away with a shooter on it was outside the Secret Service perimeter. And then she just didn't answer a lot of questions at all. She shouldn't have a job either today, should she? No, she shouldn't. And this, once again, shows the lack of accountability for people in the Biden administration, which goes all the way back to the Afghanistan debacle. But I think one of the most, you know, idiotic responses from Kimberly Cheadle was when she said we didn't have anyone up there on that roof because it was slanted. Uh, to me, that that is just ludicrous. So in other words, you left a complete rooftop within 150 yards. And Steve, let me just clearly admit, I'm a rifle enthusiast. I could have made that shot at 132 yards with hard sights, without a red dot, without any type of scope. This is how dangerous this both. was for the president. Absolutely. This is how dangerous it was. And for her to have this flippant attitude at this uh, hearing today, she needs to resign. Yeah, I saw, I think his last name is Jimenez. He represents Miami, the United States Congress. He's one mm -hmm. of the members of Congress there on site right now. I'm not particularly familiar with him, but he's 70 years old. He's standing on that roof. He goes, I got up here, mm -hmm. no problem. And if I can get here, anybody could have gotten here, and it was a complete failure. I'll give you the last word. No, you're absolutely right. And if this had been on the converse, you would hear the people on the left screaming from the rooftops and the rafters about what needs to happen and this person needs to resign. Uh, there is no way that Kimberly Cheadle has the trust and confidence of the American people in protecting uh, a dog catcher. So if she wants to maintain her honor, she should step down. And Alejandra Mayorkas should ask for her resignation. And just uh, clearing the wire just moments ago, Chairman James Comer, Ranking member Jamie Raskin just wrote a bipartisan letter calling for Kimberly Cheadle to resign her position as the director of the Secret Service. Colonel, thank you for being here. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Steve.